This cause of exploration and discovery is not an option we choose. It is a desire written in the human heart. We are that part of creation which seeks to understand all creation. We find the best among us, send them forth into unmapped darkness, and pray they will return. They go in peace for all mankind, and all mankind is in their debt. Rick was a terrific human being and a great leader. I grew to really appreciate all of his talents, his gifts, and laugh at all of his Amarillo sayings. His favorite saying, and I can hear him saying it right now, was, you know, I feel more now like I did than when I first got here. He was a naturally gifted pilot and an outstanding leader. He molded seven individuals from different parts of the world with diverse backgrounds, various religious beliefs, into an incredibly tight-knit and productive family. Oh wow, I've had the opportunity to be on a flight deck probably more than most of my crewmates to look outside and really soak up the sunrises, the sunsets, the moon rises, the moon sets, the views of the Himalayas. Uh, Australia, all the continents. Willie McCool. Laurel described Willie as an eight-year-old trapped in a ten-year-old's body. <laughs> now, partly this referred to the fact that Willie was was had the genes from somewhere that made him look like a ten-year-old, his young appearance. But mainly, it was a comment on Willie's almost boyish attitude about everything he did and everybody he met. He always exuded a positive and enthusiastic can-do spirit. The whole spaceship was glowing in silver light from the moon, and the attitude was changing, and you really felt that you were in a spaceship headed somewhere. Kaltner or Casey to her friends, was admired personally for her extraordinary kindness and technically for her strive for perfection. She had a terrific sense of humor and loved flying small airplanes with her husband and loved flying in space. Flying was her passion. She would often remind her crew as her training flow would be delayed and become extended. She would say, man, you are training to fly in space. What more could you want? I think it's been more than successful. You know, we've had some experiments that have just really done more than we ever imagined they would do, that have really gone beyond the expectations of ourselves or the scientists and engineers who designed them. Mike Anderson. Mike was the quiet, get-it-done professional. His calm confidence reflected an inner peace that came from somewhere deep within himself and his love for his family and his absolute belief in his God. The Space Hab team remembers that they respected Mike's natural leadership so much, they worked doubly hard so that they might win his respect for them. Late in the mission, the Space Hab team got their answer. Mike took the time to write an email from space, thanking them for their tireless and outstanding support. Mike was a class act. After a couple of days, you get in the groove, and it's just uh, an incredibly magical place. Laurel Clark. Laurel was meticulous and detail-oriented, but she balanced this intensity with an absolute unwillingness to start any meeting without giving you a hug, or asking about your family, or telling you with pride about hers. And she never ended the meeting 
without remembering to thank everybody there for what they were doing. Laurel made everyone, regardless of where they ranked on the organizational structure and the organizational chart, she made them feel like a colleague and a co-conspirator for success. And that was uh, quite a bit of fun. Dave Brown. Dave probably didn't know this, but he was categorized with envy by his fellow astronauts into a very special group we call the Renaissance astronauts. You see, before he was an astronaut, Dave was a Navy fighter pilot. And before he was a naval aviator, he was a medical doctor. And before that, he was a national class gymnast and even a circus performer. Dave's theory about life was to have fun at everything he did and to do everything possible. And he did everything so well. Being able to conduct a press conference from up in space as uh, the first Israeli astronaut, looking at uh, the US and the flag and the Israeli flag behind us, uh, I think it's a big oh wow for, at least for Israel. Ilan Ramon, turned to me with a question. How does one mark the Sabbath in space? With every 90 minutes, another sunset. Every 10 and a half hours is a Sabbath. Every 20 days, Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> Jerusalem, we have a problem. But Ilan taught us a powerful message. No matter how fast we're going, no matter how important our work, we need to pause and think about why we're here on Earth. Columbia was a fine ship. She was named after Robert Gray's exploration ship, which sailed out of Boston Harbor in the 18th century. Columbia and the other orbiters are all named after great explorer ships, for that is their mission, to explore the unknown. Columbia was hardly a thing of beauty, except those of us who loved and cared for her. She was often bad mouthed for being a little heavy in the rear end, but many of us can relate to that. Many said she was old and past her prime. Still, she had only lived barely a quarter of her design life. In years, she was only 22. Columbia had a great many missions ahead of her. She, along with the crew, had her life snuffed out in her prime. I was here at the shuttle runway in March of 1978 when Columbia first arrived at the Kennedy Space Center. She came in on the back of the 747, escorted by Deke Slayton in the T-38. Ready for launch by the loving care of the Kennedy team, the same care they had given to all 28 of her flights. She was finally ready to fly in April of 1981. John Young and I were privileged to take her on that maiden flight. She performed magnificently. The world's greatest electric flying machine, which was what John described her as. Because she was a little heavy, she didn't get some of the more glamorous missions, but she was our leader in doing science on orbit. Just as she was doing with this crew in Space Ab on mission STS-107, microgravity scientific exploration was her bag. She carried Space Lab numerous times, studying material processing and life sciences, all of which were focused at giving us a better life here on Earth. Columbia also helped us better understand the heavens and learn about the origins of the universe with several missions, including Astro, also by deploying the most advanced X-ray observatory ever built, the Chandra Space Telescope, and by our very recent 
Hubble Space Telescope servicing mission. Just as her crew has, Columbia has left us quite a legacy. There's heavy grief in our hearts, which will diminish with time, but it will never go away, and we will never forget. Hail Rick, Willie, KC, Mike, Laurel, Dave, and Alain. Hail Columbia.